Okay, so uh, this is our seventh week of doing, um, highlighting the Ukraine-Russian war and um, documenting evidence uh, of war crimes by Putin and his uh, and his army. It's it's been a um, it's been an incredibly trying year, and, and I cannot thank the uh, the photojournalist. There's, it'll now be over thirty who presented over the course of the year uh, for coming in and and uh, and presenting with us. So I'm really um, very thankful to them. And um, this week we have uh, for three nights. It'll be Ira Lupa, uh, Laurel Kor. And tonight we have Maxim Donek. Uh, he, sorry, sorry, uh, Anika, you, you know I wasn't going to say that right. If you'd like, you can jump in and do the right pronunciation on that for us. Yes, his last name is Don Duke, and oh, his Duke. name is Maxim. Yes, but yes. you're almost correct. Yeah, it's it's hard. It's Ukrainian language. Yes, and, and for this audience, they're, they're okay. They're, they won't give me too much of a hard time. Um, so he's actually in Ukraine, and we could not do it live with him. So I recorded it with him last week. So we're going to play that right now, and we'll be here, you know, to uh, to chat afterwards. So Jay, hit the button, and let's. I want to thank Maxim very much for for coming in and doing this with us. Um, I I'd like to thank our sponsors who help us throughout the year. It's Photo Shelter. It's Epson. American Photography and Pro Photo Daily and Archive Magazine as well. Um, tonight we have Maxim Donyak. I hope I don't do. Yeah, it's hard to spell. I know. <laughs> I apologize for that, but I, I and I have to say I've been apologizing for seven weeks with all the names that I'm uh, crucifying, but I try. So yeah. um, he is a uh, Ukrainian born and raised uh, photographer and. We are thrilled to have him uh, tonight to uh, present with us. So I give you I give you the presentation, Maxim. It's all yours. So you share your screen and off we go. Okay. Yeah, thank you for inviting me. It just uh, really, uh, I'm appreciate for it. And it's just important to show work for people, for you and talk a little bit. I think it's important. So thank you. Uh, all right. Now I just share. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Perfect. Yeah. Can you see? Yeah? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I just maybe try to a little bit uh, talk about myself, about my work. Yeah. Because I am just documentary photographer and I uh, from Ukraine and I cover this conflict uh, and this war now in uh, most a decade. Because European people are still thinking that this war happened in February of this year. But uh, believe me, this uh, war happened in 2014. And uh, I cover in 2013 14 revolution and also after cover war in East Ukraine. And unfortunately, I just continue to do uh, this uh, in this year with a uh, big invasion of Russian army. and is all what we know about this yeah and uh, yeah i'm just uh, mm, want to to say maybe that i am didn't want to be war photographer and uh, it's happened only because war happened in my war in my uh, war in my country in my reality and because I just documentary photographer and cover uh, some historical moment or some social situation in my country but never want to go to another country and cover war for me it's not interesting it's all the time brutal it's all the time for me a uh, uh, nonsense situation but when it's happened in my country when it's happened in revolution in Kiev for me it was really important to document in this historical moment for people from another country and for future generation. So unfortunately now, maybe a lot of people think I'm war photographer, but I hope it's uh, first and uh, last war in my, my career, because for me personally, like human, it's not, not interesting. And I work also with magazine, not only because I'm photojournalist, I'm documentary photographer and I'm just using documentary photography also like visual artists in exhibition and some of my personal project. But I think media is very important tools uh, when I try to fight against the Russian propaganda, when I try to spread all information and truth about this war. 
So mostly during war, during conflict, I war with magazine. But in the peaceful times, I'm just do my personal long-term project and not often work with magazine also. And to, 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 come to, the, to come to the point of shooting it, because of course it is your country and it, it, it is war, how, how do you make the jump to now photograph the horrible um, events of war and 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 still continue you mean just in 2014 or you mean now because I, now I, it does continue yeah. no i that i understand but i mean like just for you because it, it feels so such a different thing for you to be shooting emotionally um, is it the patriotic piece that gets you motivated to shoot the war? What, you know, what, what is it? Uh, unfortunately, maybe some part of patriotic, but I'm really just um, not like big fan of patriotic uh, uh, feeling. I just think it's uh, maybe I try to, I'm from Ukraine. I'm just born here, but I, a lot of years I live not only in Ukraine, but for me, it's my motherland. And my parents live here, and it's important for me use my tools, use my weapons, like camera, my eyes, to capture this moment. To I'm do, it's it, when war happened in your country, even if you artist, even if you musician or painter or contemporary photographer, you understand it's more important to try to resist this war anyway. So I decided to cover this war like documentary photographer because I can publish this picture. I can help my country to fight uh, like uh, in uh, media. I can capture uh, this historical moment for people, for future generation. And for me, maybe it's like somebody go, somebody help to our country like volunteers and other people go to the army and fight. And I took my camera and tried to do, because I think with camera, I more useful than and if I take aftermath, maybe uh, like Kalashnikov, I think it's I'm just not good fighter. I think better if I just try to fight, but with camera. Oh, okay, I understand. Beautiful. Okay, go. Oh. Yeah. So just uh, now it's better just show a few picture yeah, and just explain what happened in the picture. Yeah. Yep. I agree. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So I think, yeah, I just start, I try to show, I'm not try. I just show you um, three different story, but about one historical moment, it will be, but I want to start from this war because, uh, and after we just a little bit step by step go to the past, when I think it's this conflict uh, beginning in this decade. Yeah, and so everybody, of course, now in Europe know about uh, invasion. Everybody saw a lot of picture, and uh, mm, I just select uh, not a lot of picture. I think just I don't want to just like uh, spend a lot of time just showing all my archive because it's hard even even in for, for me. And I try to show um, some metaphysic picture because i think just it's important show not only news not only what happens not only tragical what we can see in news sometimes we should to just talk with people talk with uh, people who see picture emotional because it's really important sometimes you cannot see nothing in the picture and it's it's hard if it's a big big market it's called Barabashova, and the Russian army all the time just shelling this market. It's Barabashova. Of course, they're shelling not because of market and people just buy some stuff. No, because they surround Kharkiv and some uh, artillery and grab based in this big square in the market, Ukrainian. So it was like fighting, but all the time. And they do really crazy situation because they thought they're just shelling this market and wait maybe... 30 minutes, maybe 40 minutes, when ambulance, firemen, maybe media arrive to this place. And in the same place, shelling next time because they try to kill people who 
like uh, like doctors or firemen because they they do it all the time unfortunately once i have been the same situation i am arrived in uh, not this market another market i was with uh, jerome cecine and james knighting and uh, we just worked together and uh, emanuele satoli also and we just also arrived to some market and try to go uh to the um, Mm, central market where just so shelling some people die and it was the same the same place immediately immediate, i don't know just after maybe 40 minutes and it was like too close for us so it's sometimes it was danger cover situation because all the time even firemen after some period wait one hour after shelling because it's really risky because uh, Firemen's risk and a lot of uh, firemen uh, was killed. A lot of doctors was killed and journalists and volunteers. So it's crazy situation. Uh, and so in this picture about how it looks when we just arrived to the uh, market, yeah, some market. I think it was like beginning of this war, maybe for everybody. It was a bridge, huge bridge. Here. Uh, uh, across uh, European river and it's near uh, Buche, near, near European city. It's a small city near Kyiv and huge, huge bridge. And we know why people just uh, now try to evacuate from this city, even, even when Russia shelling all the time this bridge. People try to go from European and from Bucha because we saw what happened in Bucha, unfortunately. And for me, it was really unique situation because before I saw only a huge bridge destroyed only just from picture from another country or from Second World. But when we arrived and see this huge bridge destroying and a lot of people, thousands of people try to try to go across this bridge they stay under this bridge because russia used drone and russia saw that it's only civilian people and some soldier also but most of the soldier not fighting soldiers that just try to help people uh women and child care their luggage and try to help them and uh, russia used drone and all the time shelling from motor or from artillery and killed uh, some civilian people and a lot of wounded. Unfortunately, in this left picture, I was wounded, also injured in the in the same day. And it was not like hard, but it's it was crazy situation. It was crazy situation because it was square, and people go across of this bridge. They go across of this bridge and drive to some square and volunteer volunteers arrived uh, to this square in the, this car and people just go inside of this car and try to evacuate to the green zone where no shelling and Russia shelling this place where cars stop all the time and when I cover uh, this situation where I just took picture and few women just go away and I take a few steps I also have been with Jerome with James we work a few months together every day and this was immediately some motor just uh, was explosion and i was injured and it was crazy for me because they just it was like i don't know how it's say tear no how it's uh, i don't know like you go to some um, shooting to machine yeah or no do, do you understand what i mean yeah it's yeah like, like we say shooting in a bathtub yeah, yeah, it was the same because they use drone, it's square, and you can see it's just volunteers, car, and everywhere just they and they write volunteers, volunteers, and the roof. And you see only civilian people, few photographers, maybe few soldiers who care luggage, and you just do like this. It was even not uh, in this moment, I understand it's like genocide, it's even not war, just try to make panic, try to make house and yeah and it's this bridge it was of course it was like in first month it was crazy because thousands of people try to escape of this situation they destroy train stations they destroy all bridge 
So it was uh, one of where where they just arrived by car, left car and tried to go only with one small bag, try to escape from this situation. Oh. It's a uh, highway, it's uh, even not highway, it's avenue in Kyiv. It's, it's mostly, uh, how it is? And it's mostly not in the center, but it's close to the center. And it's three cars, Russian car with ammunition. And it's happened, I don't remember, it's happened after a few days of invasion. And I, I stay near, nearby in some hotel and it was explosion so loud in the, in the, at night. And I don't know what happened because it was three or four cars only with ammunition, with few soldier drivers, a Russian soldier who just drive to the center in Kyiv, like in Parat, without any, I don't know, looks like they think that a city open and wait for them. And of course, Ukrainian army completely destroyed this few car. I, I even don't know what this was, but this was like suicide mission. They go and all cars was with grenades, with ammunition, with some bulls, with uh, no, even no soldier, only driver and another guy. And uh, this soldier was inside like barbecue. It's like nothing. And even they, they just go through the huge avenue in the center, in the main square in Kiev. And I all the time ask myself what they think why they go who say who told them that you can go inside of city and after this situation uh Irkin bridge was destroyed by ukrainian army because they just uh, arrived to the kiev uh, through this bridge right. hmm. i that's the craziness of war right a soldier is told to ride over that bridge and they ride over the bridge and even that they don't think that uh, somebody can just resist or something else because yeah. looks like in first months russia saw that they can easily occupy ukrainian like crimea they thought we just uh, wouldn't resist we just yeah. like say, okay okay because it was like crazy because they even they use not enough of army. It's like uh, Germany army used during Second War few million soldiers for surround Kyiv. And now they use maybe 50,000 people in Kyiv. So it's nothing. It's even not possible, just not possible, even if civilian people try to resist without army. So it was like they thought that we, I don't know, give up and say, okay, okay, we are we agree to be part of Russia. It looks like this. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, this this I I, I think that um, history will have to document what Putin thought before, and to give it a context of you know, this unbelievable mistake. But the unbe the unbelievable fortitude of the Ukrainian population. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. I mean, it's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's unbelievable and it's hard moment, but I think every nation should to fight. Unfortunately, not first fight because we Ukrainian know that our confrontation between Russian Empire or Russian, it's maybe more than 300 years. For European, of course, it's unknown history, just we live in close, but di different history, different culture, yeah. But for us, it's like continue. It's not like happened even 2014. It's happened 300 years ago. All the time they try to control our country, try to escape, delete our language, our change our history. Just and uh, there, it's another picture. Uh, it's left a left picture. It's also European. It's uh, some soldier come back from. Bucha, so they just you can see in the horizon of some dark smoke and it's Bucha and European, so they just come back to the bridge because every day they go fight and after come back. And uh, from left side, it's uh, another city, it's uh, Chernigov city, and it's picture from bridge. Yeah, it was another destroyed bridge, and you can see how it looks just. I don't know how just street, not street, how it looks like road. 
and some people can die in this car and a lot of uh, uh, a lot of uh, tree just like cut and for me it's really I have a lot of picture where you can understand what happened but for me really important sometimes to show picture where you should think where you should to try imagine situation before and after. I don't want to show what happened, how it's happened. Sometimes I want to uh, try to communicate with people through my picture. I don't want to give answer people. I want, I just show something and people should to try to feel everything. And uh, yeah, and I think it's more important. And if we just use this picture in maybe in some, exhibition or something else you can see how it's how it looks uh, uh field how it looks the tree forest and everything and it's for me it's really important yeah you know it, it's interesting that you say that and it's interesting how before we started you were talking about not being a war photographer the images that you show gives gives us a bigger context of what's going on and you and you see that it's, it's really valuable to get a bigger picture of that. Mm -hmm. Very, very different from a lot of the other work. Very beautiful. Yeah, maybe, I don't know. Yeah, I just, okay. Oh my God. I hope I not destroyed everything. No, no, you're good. Yeah, yeah. Okay, like this picture. What about this picture? About nothing, crater. It's crater from another bridge, also Chernigo. But imagine if you stay, near this road when it's happened imagine if you see this picture two meters uh, in some gallery and can see every tree imagine you even can feel this explosion this fire you can see and war also destroy not only people they destroy our homeland our planet our nature we just not only just <laughs> kill each other they also destroy but of course for our land it's nothing they just our land can live without us it's <laughs> it doesn't matter for nature but for me sometimes important some picture because sometimes you can see picture like everything happened like every news picture where you can see but if you just uh change point of view and opposite direction you also can see war different but you can feel this war and sometimes i think it's even more stronger for me personally yeah uh and i think just of course people a lot of just uh, people just saw through the social media instagram or news a lot of war picture and sometimes maybe people even tired of this picture and i think it's important to try looking for some uh strong visual language like i really love painters i really love battle scene i spend a lot of time in museum in europe look how it looks and i think if you go to a museum you don't think about good side or bad side or who right who not right you see the unbelievable beautiful scene yeah you see how people die how maybe something happened in a revolution on war but you just feel that it's art, you want to see it. So I try to um, keep focus and try to um, do some pictures that people won't see first, like visual. Sometimes maybe for journalists, maybe even it's bad if you use aesthetic because journalists try to spread true. But I don't believe in true because everybody change. If I just cut half meter left on right, it's everything can change. Everything can change. Because for me, it's my, my personal point of view. And I try to contain all my emotion in my frame, in my picture, because I felt it and I try to contain it and believe that people who can stay in gallery and or museum or magazine and see my picture, maybe, I don't know, maybe 5%, maybe 10, maybe more, also can feel this emotion. Mm -hmm. Like this, you can just see um, track of dead body, right, and dead technique left. And it's like from left side, it's Kharkiv area, it's a Russian helicopter, 
And right side, it's also Kharkiv area and it's Russian dead body who just, uh, I don't know, maybe lying a few months uh, on the ground. Yeah. And uh, so it's also just not about how looks war or about how looks uh, action situation. It's not about fighting. It's not about dead people. It's not about... Uh, but how I'd say, I have a lot of picture with wounded people, with soldier, but in my personal uh, exhibition or presentation, I try not using it. I use this picture mostly for magazine, maybe for, because I need to shock people sometimes. But uh, here I want to talk with people. I want to people try to feel something, try to understand something. How, how have you changed? You personally, how have you changed from covering from your, your photography of covering this, you know, covering war? How does that change you personally? I think these questions need to ask not me. It's need to ask my uh, family or my wife. Of course, of course. I change. I remember how I changed in 2014. I spent one year uh, in the war, and when I just come back, uh, it's normal life. It was like with every soldier. It was like some some mental uh, uh, problem, I think, because it's too hard to come back to normal life. Because in the front line, it's so easy. You know who your enemy. And sometimes you even respect your enemy because a good fighter or something else, not like in far away. And you care about your friends because, and if somebody lie you, it means you will die because everybody tried to help each other. You think about food, you think about uh, sleep, you think about few few things. And when you come back to normal life, you just even go to supermarket and should to think about hundreds of kind of yogurt or milk or some stupid, stupid things. Or I don't know, wife asked me about what do you want in the breakfast? And I say X. And she asked, what kind of X? Doesn't matter. <laughs> just do X. Yeah. So of course you just change because uh, it's like you live in previous area. You live in middle area where you just keep about your safety, about your life. You just, it's a completely different world. And after you come back to capitalistic world with advertiser, with too many kind of uh, food and everything, your mind just, oh my God, it's not important for life. Why I need to think about this? So yeah, but I think for me, it's much more easy because I can make an interview, exhibition, book. I can talk with people and it just uh, helped me a lot. But soldier, sometimes uh, I know a lot of uh, my friends who come back to the war because they cannot find their way in the normal life. They come back and the war because uh, they have some sense of life, some sense of living. Mm. Mm. And when they come back, family, wife, or and other people, friends cannot understand them because they live in parallel reality in different world. So uh, I think it's, too, it's the most important thing when you come back to find any sense of in your life except of war. Because even for photography, if sense of war, you will be war photographer all your career. And it's, I think it's also, I don't know, yeah, you can say it's important, blah, 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 but it's ruin your life, it's ruin your family, it's ruin everything. Because even for me, I cover this uh, war uh, more than nine years and I dream about stop it. I dream live without cover war, 10 years more. Maybe after I just want to come back, I don't know, but it's hard, it's mentally hard, yeah, because some people love war, some people like soldier or even photographer love war, but I'm against of any sense of war. I'm just hate war and think it's a it's nonsense situation. Nobody win in this war, not in this year. Every war, it's nobody win. We only lose. Very true. Continue. Yeah. Yeah. So it's uh, 
also try to explain something about picture. Yeah, it's, uh, I don't know if you see the whole picture or you see also me, I don't know. No, we, we see the whole thing. You're just a little square up on top. Okay, super. Yeah. Uh, so it's, uh, I try to show how people live because if you just uh, try to um, not mention the dead body, dead old woman in the floor, you see normal room in the butcher, normal house, old woman living. You see house she lives in, you see chairs, green uh, walls, everything. And it's unusual situation, some dead body living here. I even don't know how she died because it's like some black uh, i don't know uh blood in the arms looks like maybe she was wounded or injured outside uh, outside maybe she tried to go inside i don't know maybe it was just shrapnel and she immediately this but it's unusual situation in the butcher you can walk in this city and everywhere you can you can find that body everywhere in park go to in house in the street and it's i don't know it's like barbarians go inside of city like a uh, few hundreds uh, years ago and killed everybody it's unbelievable because i spent maybe four or five days in the butcher and lost my mind because it was like I, I'm like criminal photographer. Every day I took a lot of picture with dead body, but only dead body in normal situation. And it was crazy because it's even not war. Because for us, war is when two country or two cultures have problem and soldier fight in battlefield. But it's soldier go inside of city and kill women, young men child, old woman, everyone. It's, yeah. for me, it's like unbelievable. And I just, I think it's crazy, crazy situation. Yeah, it's uh, two different hospital. It's uh, from left side, it's a hospital in the um, Boyerka, it's a small city near Kiev, and it's two soldiers. It was uh, air strike of their position, and they was wounded and sitting in the, some hospital. And from left side, it's a woman, normal woman. She lived in Kharkiv, and she slept in your apartment and wake up in the hospital because Russia <laughs> destroyed her house. Doctor amputated her legs and she lost everything. And too many people, too many people. I met some guy without uh, two legs who just was amputation two legs. It's 27 years and he just go, he just slept in the house. And because one big country tried to, I don't know, destroy it in another culture and in another country, it's just like they lost everything. And I think you can see a lot of pictures like this, yeah. But I try to show not only this horror situation, I try to also show, try to make like some iconic situation where you can see how this woman looks, how she looks, how this situation looks, because for me really important light, color, emotion, how people see it, and I just uh, spend a lot of time trying to do this, and uh, not only shocked people, but make something, uh, I don't know, visual, because I think it's important, because if you do just only horror, people just after some period stop looking at it, yeah. But if it's like, uh, like I saw, like in museum, like painting, people want to see because people attracted it. It's, it's horrible because people sometimes love some art with horrible situation, love war, yeah, love uh, some torture or something else. It's problem inside of us. It's problem inside of us. We continue war because we people, we human. It's even not problem of some country sometimes. Yeah. Maxim, I must ask you, you know, how do you balance this? Because obviously you go into this so emotionally 
like the the piece of reporting versus the emotional cost that it caused that you pay you as a sensitive human being a, a father a husband all of that th there's this this fight I, I would imagine in your mind of i need to report this but to witness this there's also a cost you mean what my cost about witness this? yes like your cost to your heart to your head to your spirit mm. sometimes i don't know i just believe that sometimes we cannot uh change our uh duty yeah our duty sometimes looks like i cannot uh change this sometimes looks i tried many times go to another country i live in paris i live two years in asia but all the time when something happened in my country i come back to the, my country maybe even before like this time i come back after two years in asia come back before war and i have been in this uh, country when it's happened so for me it's like i don't know maybe it's like big wars like duty but i don't know what I can do during this war, except of documenting in this story, mm -hmm. except of documenting this historical moment. And I try to be like more philosophical. I'm not like patriotic, like you say, I'm not like just happy everything. I try to understand this uh, rock, uh, lessons, try to understand, try to change also my mind. So. I think it's even helped me. But and you, if you check my website, I all the time cover some crazy situation. I live two years in tuberculosis hospital and cover situation about tuberculosis and live with people who was sick in tuberculosis. And for me, it's changed my mind a lot. It's changed a lot of I just stop care about, I don't know, some mobile phone or money or work because I saw death every day so for me it's like uh, my way of understanding real life and also it's my motherland also it's uh, my country and i try to be useful uh and i try to use how i can be useful for my country because i think it's uh, more important how i'd say and of yeah. course i pay some cost of course i pay some cost sometimes i can control my emotions sometimes i aggressive sometimes uh, i'm sure it's hard for my family talk with me like my father mother and my wife unfortunately and i even try to control it sometimes but sometimes it's not possible sometimes i'm fucking crazy fucking crazy man and of course i need time after war just calm down go to the some monastery for months meditation i understand it yeah. but i also cannot stop now yeah i understand yeah no that that was yeah i understand yeah yeah it's uh in the left is the uh, same situation but in other market also like in kharkiv and uh, you can see how firemen uh, mm, yeah working and all the time it's something happened again with firemen so it's not only a soldier resist it's a lot of doctors and firemen was killed and mostly they was killed like russia like it like second challenge in the same position all the time all the time they do in in Kharkiv, it was 99 percent second challenge like i say after 30 or 40 minutes unfortunately it's like uh, crazy crazy and left picture it's uh, some hospital uh, and it's uh, uh, it's uh, in south front line in neo zaporizhia and so it's soldier who was just uh, mm, yeah, it was wounded and doctor operated him after just uh, some battle situation so it's just like normal work of doctors and i also try to show not only soldier fight and firemen and doctor and even civilian people who help people who help a soldier so it's uh, now in ukraine it's only two different uh, kind of people one who just uh, go abroad and try to be far away from this war and it's it's normal everybody different and then other people stay in ukraine and believe me even if you just stay here and not 
soldier, you try to do something for resist of this conflict, like volunteers or spend money for army or like uh, make picture or help uh, some people with uh, flat, with food. So it's everybody, everybody fa fight against Russia. So it's no way, it's no possible Russia can win. Of course, it's, it's, it will be not like short war, unfortunately. I will be happy if it's, uh, uh, if it's uh, finished soon, but I don't know. But it's not possible to um, um, invasion our country. Everybody don't want, now everybody say, okay, we're living without electricity because sometimes they're sharing and there's electricity a few days, nothing, but better live without electricity and without Russia. And everybody just use candle and also drink wine and say, go fucking away Russia. We don't want to live with you. We don't need electricity, gas and everything. We don't, we want to be independent. We want to use our language. We want to, just educate our child with our history. So, and it's like, I think it's not possible because the whole country, yeah. Uh, it's, uh, it's battlefield. You can see two dead Russian soldiers. And uh, in the horizon, you can see two Ukrainian soldiers in some battlefield. And sometimes it looks like this, you can go to some place and see a lot of a lot of Russian soldiers. In this day, I took a lot of picture and every picture with dead Russian soldier. And you see some soldier care about care some wounded soldier and something happened, maybe artillery or shelling, I don't know, maybe some special forces arrive, I don't know. But it's crazy because uh, Sometimes I saw a lot of Russian soldier and I, sh and I think also Ukrainian soldier from another side who forgotten few months and mother don't know or wife don't know where his child or husband. Yeah. And for what, for what reason? Why I, I saw before, it's no reason any, any war. It's the best decision stop war it's just like not fighting against each other and um, i don't know and it's so it's ground and it was like and you cannot see here in the horizon but it's uh it's ground garden yeah it's apple garden so yeah. now it's like uh, some small tree because it was uh, winter and so it's just small small tree but now it's like uh, apple garden and these people just die in this place and believe me in this place it was i don't know hundred russian soldier and every square was hundred was uh, dead russian soldier uh, and they lost a lot of people i just lost a lot of people and i don't know for what reason really you can see this is the same situation. Another Russian soldier uh, in the position and uh, from left side and uh, it's some artillery system uh, with uh, melt uh, metal. And for me, it looks like blood. Human has blood and uh, techniques, military techniques has this like metal and for me it's like uh, like dead body with blood it's a similar situation mm -hmm. and from left side here yeah, you can see how it's poetic looks like some <clears throat> russian dead soldier die but it's how it say it's some son some husband for what i don't know i don't know for what we fight we fight for resisting our country we don't we don't have any any chance to escape what we can do 40 million people go to the euro, it's just not possible. We should to protect our country. We should to resist. We don't have any way. But for what reason Russian soldiers go to the, only because of propaganda? I don't know. That, that's, that's, that's what we're finding out now, right? I mean, th those Russian soldiers don't want to be there. They just don't. I mean, your point is exactly right. Exactly. But, and yeah. prop propaganda is a very strong tool. 
oh yeah, especially Russia, they really can use it. I think propaganda is much more better than their weapons. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, is this more uh, in some field hospital um, in some village near Papasna? And uh, for me personally, this uh, this I don't know how it's called. Sorry, English. This uh, uh, stretcher. Uh, stretcher. Yeah. This blood for me personally, it's more emotion than if you can see dead body. Because if somebody from Ukraine can see the dead body, you can recognize, oh, it's not my friends. It's not my family. But here you can see, it could be maybe some of my friends or my family here. You just start thinking about, you understand that it was some wounded or dead body, but because I take picture without dead body, you start thinking about more. Maybe somebody explained you that it was in the same room or something else. So I'm really love just talk with people like this, not put like object. And sometimes I take a lot of pictures about war without people. Mm -hmm. Because people can put inside of this picture uh, their emotions, their friends, their, I don't know, situation, maybe even imagine that you can be here. Yeah, and so it looks like this, and it's uh, how Ukrainian government tried to protect our monuments in Kharkiv. It's uh, our painter Staras Grigorievich Shevchenko. It's like symbol, like Lenin in Moscow and Shevchenko. It's like Ukrainian culture monuments, and uh, it's like uh, back with uh, sand. Yeah, it's with sand. Yeah, and uh, they try to make like pyramid and protect every monument in Kharkiv because all the time shelling and also Russian army destroy and ruin a lot of monuments, a lot of cultural monuments, and it's important. And the whole country try to uh, protect our uh, historical monuments or some museum, some building, uh, opera or something else everywhere. A lot of uh, construction like this. And it's that's, for that's, me it's like, yeah. No, I, I, I apologize for interrupting, but that is such an intense photograph. That's such an intense thing to do. I mean, that, that takes a lot of time, a lot of effort, but the importance of that statue is priceless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people. So how I say you, every people try to do something for resist yeah. our culture. And not only like soldiers, some like people who just clean street do this and spend not like one day. It's like, I don't know, maybe one week. It's, a few, it's like 10 people do it, maybe one week with some machine. But it also looks like some surrealistic situation, like yeah. crazy, crazy, like contemporary art. It's, for me, it's like some uh, art would create war situation and you even cannot uh, create it in normal situation, but it looks like some unbelievable situation. And, and, and it will probably be a ceremony when it's taken down, when the sandbags are taken I, away. It, it'll, be an it'll be an independence moment. You can imagine the town there all coming out for that. Yeah. And maybe some people even forgot how this monument looks. Yeah. That is amazing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's hard if it's hard if it's like uh, uh, region uh, government government building. Yeah, it's like in the main square government building, and it was uh, maybe you know, maybe show some pictures. So it was like some rocket uh, and it was killed a lot of people and completely destroyed. But a lot of streets nearby also destroyed because for me, uh, for me, it's, uh, you can see like, I don't know, it's some memories like uh, 1911 in New York. You see some monuments, some metal, uh, this glass building and it's like surrealistic, some eyes like, uh, if it like this, you can see it's like, I don't know, it's like a Hollywood movie. It's like unbelievable situation. And it's like crazy, crazy situation in real world, in real world. So, 
war is horrible, but for me, like artists, sometimes it's, I don't know, it's unbelievable. Uh, if I can say not beauty, but it's like a philosophic moment. And I think we can just, um, sometimes the picture talk more with us through emotion. Maybe not about sense, but through emotion, because sometimes you should explain something to people just when you just talk, but through image, you can feel it just like, oh my God, what happened here? You can feel this explosion through this picture. But if you talk about people, it's too hard to uh, say, oh, it's, it's 24 people die, it's a few streets destroyed, blah, blah, blah. It's too hard. But if you see picture, you, oh my God. Yeah. And it's uh, the same area in near government building, just, and you can see in the left side, just like surrealistic. It's like air condition, ice, water. It's like, it's like uh, just crazy situation. And another side, it's some soldier, um, just uh, some refugee, uh, some rescue guy just found some dead body and soldier just check who is it because he know everybody who dies in this uh, building and you can see how it's, it's just like so it's not like picture about war but for me it's picture about war you can see a lot of details you can see a lot of situation and but sometimes you cannot understand what really happened because it's most mo mostly about maybe emotion about feeling it was before uh, 24. I start covering this year from 5 February. I go to the front line. It was near Papasnaya. And I spent two weeks with a soldier. And war happened when I already covered the situation. Because it looks like I felt something. I don't know. So I just start covering this war two weeks before invasion. And when you're shooting, are you with, like, do you team up with another photographer? Or you, you're alone with your fixer? How do you do that? I don't need a fixer because I'm Ukrainian. It's mostly fixer need people because uh, for me better. But depends. If I go with soldier, it's better if I alone or maybe with one friend. Uh, of course, it's better to be um, two photographer maybe because everybody can care if something happened during driving or you injure or something else. Uh, and but. Sometimes I work with soldier alone, but mostly I try to work with some friends. Uh, uh, because if it's risky situation, or if some your friends more experienced, or if something like it happens with me, I was injured, and who knows if I was injured hardly, somebody should to help me. So mostly we try to work um, like small team, like uh, two photographer, or sometimes maybe more. It depends, but I'm really love work alone. And sometimes, not sometimes, often I work. I can just go to the some hospital and spend one week with soldier because I'm long term phot uh, uh, photographer. For me, I sometimes I spend three days only for communication with people, only for make some relationship. Yeah, yeah. So sometimes I just spend a lot of like in tuberculosis hospital. I spent two years or another some so for me it's the best way to arrive to some place and live one week in this place mm. but sometimes it's hard of course uh, during the uh, first few months this war it was too dangerous stay in any place so all the time frontline shifting and sometimes you can arrive to some village and in the mornings it can be russian position so it was like you should to change your position all the time yeah, so it was before, before, it's this year, but it was before invasion. Mm. And it's like, uh, yeah, it's uh, my uh, story, like you can write, uh, you could, uh, read about it. And I just, uh, after my war experience in 2014, I come back to the same place. Uh, bloody place very important place yeah. during war and after war after one year in the war i felt emptiness in, inside of me 
And a lot of my friends, soldiers also have emptiness and they come back to the normal life. And the, during war, you're important. Like some buildings, you saw in this story, some buildings which was, which was really important during war, but now it's abandoned and nobody care. And nobody care. And I try to show through some landscape, through some uh, bonded situation, this emptiness, what I felt and what felt a lot of people with war experience. Because you can see track or scarf uh, from war and nobody now care about the situation. But during 2014, this uh, place was really strategically important. A lot of people die in this place, but now it's nobody needed it. Nobody even want to reconstruction it. And so I, I just travel uh, in, um, in this place. Uh, during winter, for me, it was really important to show emptiness. And I try to, sometimes I found some place and even uh, wait a few days for snow, for white. And it's, you can see it's more conceptual story. It's about war, but it's not about what happened. It's about maybe my reflection on this world. And for me, it was also just come back to the front line. And it was not like close to the front line, but you can still can hear some some shelling, some, uh, some noises from front line. And it's like uh, somebody go to a uh, psychologist and talking about war. And I'm just come back to this uh, place and try to fight against of some feelings inside of me. Be yeah. closer to front line. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I was just going to say for you, is it therapeutic to come back and see it all white and clean? In, in some way for, for your own mental, uh, your mental well-being to see it this way. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it's like, uh, yeah, yeah. It's, it, it, yeah, it's like, I don't know. I see like just like, like emptiness, like, but believe me, in this uh, building, what you can see, it's uh, right. In few meters, I don't know, 100 meters, maybe right. It's normal building, normal market, people living normal life. So it's the same like soldier in the crowd. You stay inside of crowd with people, with wine in the party, but you feel emptiness because nobody understands you. And nobody even not needed you because you're a soldier and now war finished. You're not needed. You're just stupid soldier. You can only fight and kill and other people. You can do nothing. So it's it's like about transformation about. And for me, it was like, I tried to show my introvert, my what inside of me through picture, what I, what I see, yeah. And uh, it was like my therapy maybe after 2014. And I really thought that I never come back to the war after this. But unfortunately, it's happened. Yeah, like this, you can see. But believe me, it's not like uh, mm, it's not like desert. It's not like I take this picture and everywhere no people. I wait a lot of time. I just uh, 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 choose frame where it's you can feel like it's desert. But yes. it's normal city and and another place. It's uh, people live and some dogs and some child. It's like only like some spot inside of some village or some road or some city. Yeah. So it's like visual manipulation. It's not even about true or news. It's about like yeah. It's like Ukrainian tanks. Yeah, in Ukrainian, like some checkpoint and now it's emptiness and nobody cares about these checkpoints. Yeah, and like tranchet, somebody die here, somebody just fight here. Now it's like, like nothing. Yeah. Or like this, how many people die here? Who knows? It, now really, like it, just... it really illustrates the stupidity of war. Yeah. Right, like you say, <laughs> how many people died here? And now we walk past it as we walk our dogs, right? 
Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like, yeah. Yeah. So it's like, I try to, I travel near front line from Black Sea to the Russian border, to this border with uh, this Republic, uh, Donbass, and try to find some place and wait sometimes a uh, few days only for take one picture. And for me, it was only important feeling. I don't care about sense, literature, what it's meaning. I just try to put my feeling and try to just I don't know. I want to put all my feelings or my bad mood inside of this picture about the war. So it's like just some garbage, something else with some black bird, but maybe meaning in some storytelling all the time, death or something else. So I try to find some, yeah, some. Yeah, in my website, you can see more pictures from this project. I just tried to show in presentation, like, so, like yeah. yeah. Maxim, do you find when when you're having, you know, you're home now and, you know, you're getting a little bit nervous or uh, thinking about the war, do you go back to these images to find peace for yourself? You mean just when I take this picture? No, no, like now, you know, it, it, it's a Tuesday, a Tuesday evening, and you're just relaxing, and you want to find peace. You're just a little calm. I think, I think now I felt uh, more stressed when I just see this picture. Oh, because it looks like I just, uh, looks like I um, a little bit felt the same what I felt when I take this picture, because all the time it's like connection with me. It's like my child. And when you saw your child, you just felt some emotion if it doesn't happen with your child you just felt this so when i saw this picture some picture i don't like some picture but all the time i have connection some feeling and 100 percent not peaceful okay yeah so and it was uh, from what this conflict this war beginning yep. and i mean in this uh, century not even this century but in this uh uh in this situation and it was it was a revolution and it was like my first experience um, like war photographer or conflict photographer i live in kiev and it's happened in my city and i cover this situation and i was 100 percent this protester in my mind but like documentary photographer and like man who really love philosophy, I thought it was really bad idea if I cover revolution only from sight of uh, protesters. So even this uh, uh, during the documentary in this revolution, I spent uh, not one day with policemen because I tried to felt I tried to. Uh, see how looks situation from policeman side, uh, and for me it was important to show this situation because for me it's culture of confrontation. I just uh, did the book about this, and it was a uh, confrontation between two cultures in Ukraine. It was uh, one culture which want to come back to Soviet Union, which want to come back and be to Russian part. And another culture want to be independent, want to be with European Union or with European culture. So it was conflict between, not between different uh, age, it was conflict between different culture, different mentality. And I tried to show this and try to uh, show in my picture both sides and people just should decide how it looks. And for me, it was like unbelievable battle scene. It was like uh, I didn't try to show Ukrainian revolution because every revolution is the same. It's conflict between two different mentalities. And I think if I cover this revolution with uh, and try to cut some Ukrainian flags or some situation about some subject, people can feel this revolution because some 
people can say me, oh, it looks like French Revolution or it looks like from previous era or something else. And I think it's more important. And if I try to connect some battle stand from historical moment with present and keep focused people of uh, this situation. And you can see how a lot of policemen go against of protester. How many? It looks like it's even not like protesting. I don't know, like in Europe, but you see it's only a small part, but believe me, it's more, more, more soldier, more policemen and another side protester. It's like war. It's like small war inside of city. Like here, it's like crazy situation. In the, it's like, I don't know, like paradise, like movie, like uh, unbelievable situation for me. And I try to show what I felt because I didn't see just revolution, just Ukrainian people. I saw this paradise situation. And I want to show hundreds of people in my picture. I try to do huge landscape where you can see the whole battlefield set, like here. And you can see every stone, it just was I don't know, from police side or from protest side. And it's like middle area. It's like crazy, crazy situation. It mm. was really sad revolution, but visually it was unbelievable, unbelievable situation, I think. And before revolution, I work only for long-term project alone, like tuberculosis. And all the time I have been alone in some place. And here it was my first experience with hundreds of international famous photographers from the whole world. And I used only 35 millimeters. And for me, it was what the fuck I need to do in here. Everybody with huge leaves or white leaves, everybody so close, and I cannot find my place. So maybe it's even helped me because I just go far away from this crowd and take like picture like this with small people and you cannot see even photographer. And just for me, it was like, I try to find my way of uh, how I can just uh, take picture from this moment. But it was unbelievable crazy because it was like competition between 200 photographer and really high level. And for me, it was, first experience working in the crowd of video. It was like, oh my God, with thick 35 millimeters lens, it's like suicide missions. <laughs> how, how do you really like, so you go home after after you, you do a shoot like that and you go home, do you tell you tell to your wife, I mean, like, how do you explain that? And how, and how do you move forward? Like it had to be such a, um, a clash of what you've always been doing to now witnessing this and now documenting this, that whole process, you know, what was the conversation between you and your wife or you and your, you know, other photographer friends? I couldn't go to home because uh, during the revolution, it was like some small city inside of capital with uh, some bench. And if I go, I will be immediately arrested from policemen, beaten or even killed. So I lived inside of three months. I lived inside of, sometimes I come back when it was peaceful time, but I live with protester in the floor. I eat in the same food and I will be like protester with camera. And sometimes wife arrive to my dad to me because if policemen see some black smoke or something else on the people, you immediately arrested. So wife sometimes can, uh, can uh, come to me but for me, it was too hard, not only for me, for everybody who was uh, in this uh, Maidan Square, it was too hard and too dangerous to go uh, outside of this place. So it was our fortification, our castle. Right. Wow. Yeah, and uh, it looks like, like hell, like some unbelievable situation, like, something crazy crazy like people with some fire some small people so i don't know for me it's like in this period i was how i'd say so impressed of some painters from battlefield and i think um, paint 
team <laughs> influence a lot of in my ph photography because uh, I am not like big fan of photography. Maybe I'm just do photography because I can cannot paint painting. Uh -huh. Yeah, but for me, more more emotion. It's movie in poetry, in philosophy, in paintings, and photography. I know only. Uh, photography if i just saw book exhibition or met some photographer but i never checked photography in online for me it's like unfortunately i i lost a lot of maybe good photography but it's no way if i can find someone in online i i, I didn't use even social media my wife used social media and spread some picture but personally i even don't have any application about social media so i just more real men than online and like this and maybe a movie and painting more mm. impressed me and maybe i used a lot of tools from this art i don't know mm. okay okay yeah I, I, yeah you could see that my god mm. so this is in 2014 we're looking at now yeah, yeah, it's just you look at revolution and for Ukrainian, it's beginning of this right. revolution and after war, yeah. Yeah, it's 2013 and 2014, it was three months, yeah, from November, yeah, until February. So it's interesting, these soldiers here are the same soldiers now that are fighting against the Russians. Yep, exactly. Not everybody, not everybody. You should understand that uh, a lot of mostly more brutal uh, policemen, it's uh, in Ukraine, it's Berkut, it's some special force from policemen uh, who killed and fight uh, civilian people was from Crimea, Lugansk and Donetsk. So after revolution, everybody go from another side. This, so uh, it's, it wasn't possible that uh, some uh, Lviv uh, from uh, West uh, Ukrainian uh, policemen killed uh, people. They can arrest it, they can do something. But more brutal was soldier. They used Georgiev's line, they used uh, some Soviet Union flag. So it was confrontation between two cultures. And they were so brutal. And protesters used uh, 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 Ukrainian flag and uh, Ukrainian independent army flag. So it was like confrontation between independent Ukrainian with European mentality and Soviet Union Ukrainian who want to combat. And mostly soldiers, uh, they was just not soldiers, they policemen, they now fight or even die after eight years from, uh, from Lugansk, Donetsk and Crimea side. Okay. Yeah, you can see main square how it looks, but it looks like I don't know some square in Rome, some middle area, or something else. Uh, for me personally, it looks like like you can see a lot of people. I I just wanted to show this huge landscape. I just didn't interest in show one heroic face or one. Fight it. I want to people see how it looks like some Pepsi table, people sitting, eating something, soldier, how they look, how looks this main square, a lot of detail. So because I love presentation, my picture more in exhibition, when you just go to a museum or gallery and see two meters or one meters, uh, this picture, you can see a lot of details. You can see a lot of, you can see another side and uh, yeah, some potatoes, some, so it's a lot of details. And sometimes maybe because I didn't use social media because sometimes it's hard to find what I want to show through small uh, screen in mobile phone. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it like this. And I really like landscape. It's it's my, I, I don't know. I just called it, but it's not I called it. It's somebody called it. It's Dusseldorf school use it. It's God eyes. You can see for this situation like God see, not like decide who bad, who good. You just see like uh, in the. Um, you call that God eyes? Huh? You said it's called God eyes? Like God eyes, yeah, like, yeah, God eyes, because you can see for this situation. Yeah. 
not like decide who bet or you like from heaven or from I don't know like something okay. and you just not like decide decide better good you just see the whole picture yeah yeah and I just really loved this yeah way but sometimes of course I just close it I'm used mm. it depends it depends on situation and you can see here um, like it was fighting without weapons. I mean, it was cocktail Molotov, some tires, fires, smoke. And I don't know what happened, but uh, I am not like a religion guy. But during three months, wind all the time was from protester side. So protester can use tires and fire. And it's all, all the time was problem for policemen. <laughs> all the time, even if change uh front line we change to the side of policemen it was like crazy so they cannot use it police and policemen were all the time was so dark like miners <laughs> because of it it's main square if you can see in this picture it's main square it's uh maidan is a legend it's like yeah a uh, square of independence yeah and it's yeah mm. It's just like poetic picture. That's, like, that's beautiful too, my God. It's like, and it was like smoke and it was maybe a few seconds, some gap through the smoke and this building, because I have picture without this building, but this building do a lot of for this picture and it's like appears in this picture. And of course it's like architecture from empire even before Soviet Union. So it's like, I don't know, like 100 years, like, I don't know, some BTR, like from Soviet Union, it looks like even Czech Republic Revolution or some war during, uh, I don't know, some conflict. It's, you cannot even understand what is this conflict. If I not say you, it's Ukrainian Revolution, it's not possible to understand why I took this picture. Yeah. But you can see how people fight. It was like, it so, was fucking cold winter. It was minus 30. <laughs> so everybody tried to make a lot of fire. <laughs> so let, let me ask you this, Maxim. I, you know, where does this country go next? This war is over, hopefully as soon as possible. And, you know, with the government, you know, and its problems with corruption, you know, wh what, what do the young people want? Can they go back to just the way it was? Do, do you, you have a was? What do you mean was? Uh, was in how it was before war or how it was during Soviet Union or what before, do you mean before, was? What, what caused the, the 2014 protests? Right. Okay. Right. I mean, yeah. can, can we can we get can we get to a place where the young people feel represented, that want to be part of the government? There isn't so much corruption. You know that. Like, is there conversations around that? I think it's not possible to come back to the past because, uh, believe me, it's everything changed. And now, yeah, it's corruption. Unfortunately, it's like our history from Soviet Union. A lot of corruption. But mentality change. Even government with corruption cannot do what corruption government do before. Because now they uh, think about independence. They think about Ukrainian culture. They used a, a lot of Ukrainian um, cultural events. They just... Uh, before, half country used Russian language. Now, you cannot learn Russian language in the school. You cannot see Russian monument in the uh, in the square on city. You cannot watch Russian TV or radio. So Russia do the big mistake. They ruin all pro-Russian. Even I talk with people who was pro-Russian before war, who say me before 24 February, I was I love Putin. I dream about Russia come to Kharkiv. And now they killed my wife, they ruined my house, they shelling and bombing because Russia mostly destroyed pro-Russian city. They thought it's before was like Kharkiv, Mariupol, a lot of people 
talk by Russian language, a lot of Russian monument, and people who was pro-Russian now hate Russian culture. They even hate Dostoevsky, Tolstoy. They do huge mistake, I mean, in, for the future. Yeah, yeah. This war. It's uh, because now it's no way, it's like big wall, I, I think, for few generations between Russia and Ukraine. I think it's no way to even communicate. And I think, uh, yeah, corruption, it's problem. It's problem with every country, with our country, it's bigger, with another country, smaller, but, but our way, our perspective, because you should understand why revolution happened in Ukraine. Do you know? No, I'm going to let you tell me so I don't sound foolish. Okay, yeah. Because our president Yanukovych before make a lot of things that we integration in European Union. And after one day, he go to the Sochi, talk with Putin, uh, take big credit uh, for credit uh, debts, yeah, credits from Russia and say, no, we cut our relationship with the European Union. Now we will be uh, connection with Russia. And the young generation say, fuck you, man. Who are you that decide for the whole country the thing? So now it's not possible because we completely change. We try to be European, not like we try to be European Union and blah, blah, blah. We try to be like democracy country. We try to uh, use uh, not like uh, Russian mentality, not try to be like Soviet Union mentality. We try to be independent country. We try to be normal. We try to uh, use democracy. We try to destroy corruption step by steps. We try to do it. And believe me, after war, if government be corruption, it's million people with war experience change the situation immediately and they understand it. It's no way to play for this. No way. So it has changed. Beautiful. Yeah, I, I think, yes. Yeah. So, of course, it's hard. It's like not like easy ways that after war, everything changed, of course. But step by steps, and Russia and Putin did huge mistake. I mean, because if he tried to do some propaganda or something else, he had more chance to change mind in some people in some area in Ukraine. But now he ruined their city. Kharkiv was before maybe 40% uh, pro-Russian. Now it's heroic city. Now it was mostly surround and just fight and now it's like more pro-Ukrainian cities than before, only because he tried to destroy the city. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. No, Try no. to maybe finish this. Yeah, just a little bit. Yeah, you just can see how looks uh, revolution, how looks square, how it was, maybe. Yeah, it was nine years ago. I think even people just don't remember how it looks. Yeah. And see, it's like two different side connection. Look at this picture. Wow. It's like a different color. I don't know who, who create orange <laughs> uh, helms. Orange. Uh, it's somebody just, yeah, but it looks like some red, but you can see dark orange, but it's connect. It's connect. It's fighting. It's like huge fighting. Or like this. I don't know. I just uh, incredible in fire in the main square and some some guy just walking. So it's also sometimes I, I how would say it's hard to understand where I just took this picture, which city during what period. Because for me, it doesn't matter. I try to play with people about memories about. Yeah. yeah. Film about like this also it can be i don't know anywhere mm. you can see it people fight with and it's some grown-ups inside of crowd ukrainian flag like some patent like some patriotic situation and you can see how many people support fighting not a lot of people 10 i don't know 20 see how many people in the background? Everyone support, even just staying. 
So it's like now it's the same. It's our army. It's I don't know somewhere that, and everybody in the back. And if they need, they go and just change these people. And now they just help these people. It was like uh, I don't know. So it's for us. It just continue. We just continue what happened. Oh my God! How do I need to? Uh, maybe it's finished. Okay. Yeah. Mm. That's um, yeah. That, that that is just incredible work. That is just yeah. You, you've um, you've inspired us. I, I'm sure you could um, you could stop sharing it if you'd like now, Maxim. Mm -hmm. If you if that was the last slide. Yeah. No, that that is just uh, beautiful, beautiful work. Um, and I, I have to, it would not be fair not to thank your wife for, um, for all the help that um, she, she came together to help us um, put this presentation together. Um, so what, what's next for you? Do you? When do you go back out to the front? What, what, what are you going to do? I think I just uh, have power to continue uh, documenting this situation maybe until summer. And I hope in, until this period, maybe <laughs> something changed, I don't know, because uh, it's hard to, when you just non-stop cover war just uh, uh, a year, it's hard. Because for foreigner photographer, it's uh, a little bit easy because they come back to Paris, Berlin, or another country with safety place, wine, rest but i never even if i come back to home it looks like normal but now can just even during this record some missile can just uh, destroy my building killed me it could happen and all the time your mentality just focusing on this if some noise or something happened you're not like just like in europe because when i have been in arm in this summer yeah. it was one times when i just go abroad we was like freak guys with my wife because if we just uh, hear some aircraft, we not was happy or some sound from door or something else. For us, it was our mind keep focusing for safety situation. For mm. everybody, it's normal champagne or something else. For us, it's like <laughs> it's it's a little bit crazy. So I think after I don't know after maybe more than half year. Uh, I should to maybe stop something. I don't know. We'll see. I try to cover the situation how long I can. I just uh, in Monday just go to the east uh, and try to com come back to the cover situation. So mostly I go and spend a few months. And uh, in this year, how war uh, it's beginning, I was three times at home. Wow. Okay. Yeah, it's, um, it's not yeah. like I just spent three days and come back at home. It's like first time I come back. It's work happened in 24. I start cover uh, in 5 February and come back uh, 20 June. Wow. 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 That's a long time. So my wife just didn't see me. <laughs> I mean, and, and, and the um, your family, there's a cost that they pay as well, right? always always worried right all the time yeah so but i think now it's situation in for every family yeah yeah We've got a lot of men's now in the front line if we talk about women now every woman yeah um, I even for me i'm just even not brave guy because i cannot imagine our soldier who stay nine months in the tranche because I can come back, I can change play, and they stay in this situation, fighting, fighting. It's like like crazy situation, and didn't see their child, their wife, and how many our good men we lost because of this war. So yeah. with our army, it's like unbelievable, brave, and we just like civilian who not fight, try to be a little bit like our army, try to help them. Right. Yeah. Well, I, 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 I cannot thank you enough for, uh, for doing this. And like I say, I, I, I do very much appreciate everything your wife did to pull this together and, and make it happen for us. And know that um, anytime you want to come back and show new work, this topic or another topic, we would love to have you. 
absolutely love to have you. Um, and we we only wish that you know you're safe and you try to have um, a little bit of peace during the holidays. And what I'd like to do is if you could have the last moment to send us away for the evening, I give it to you. Any final Thank thoughts? You. Thank you. It was a pleasure to talk with you. Thank you. It's all the time. It's uh, it's good for talk for people who have more experience because we share this emotion and it's helped us also. Okay, good. Um, well, thank you very much. And we will, um, we will, we will, I'm sure we, we hope very much that you remain safe and we see you again. So thank you. Yeah. All right. Thank you. So that, um, we just put his link into the chat room if you'd like to see uh, Maxim's uh, website and his work. But I have to say now listening to that again was um, just as riveting. That was really um, so humbling. I mean, th th that guy is just you know so at ease and um, so revealing in, in what he does and how he does it. Um, th that, was, that was just wonderful. So we can up everyone, if anyone has any comments, um, like I said, you know, we're up for tomorrow and Friday with uh, two other great uh, photojournalists as we, um, as we continue on this, um, on this journey of you know, having so many um, insightful photographers uh, coming in and showing us work. So I thank you all for, um, for, uh, for coming in. So very, very much. If anyone else has any comments, you know, it's a, I know that, that work leaves you a little bit speechless, I have to say. Yeah, I just wanted to say thank you for sharing this with us, with all his uh, conversation, with all his thoughts, not interrupting him, not to rush him. <laughs> yeah, so it's uh, quite a pleasure. No, that, that's very, I'm glad that you say that because while you're doing it, you're wondering, is he going too long? But then there's always another beautiful nugget that comes from him that's so just, well, I'm glad I let him talk. You know, that, that's, that's a great observation. So thank you for saying that. Um, but yeah, no, he, he's just wonderful. And, and you know, there was more pieces of, of his wife actually coming in, you know, at the end. And, you know, she did a little cameo because she, uh, I guess, Scott, you know who she is. Um, and she, she was just wonderful because I, I know during the weeks of prep, prepping for this, she was the one that really pull, pulled it together for him. So that that was um, and and she was great about it and very comforting and you know a lot of emails back and forth so it was nice and so you know she was she was on camera there for a while so she was great yeah so yeah I'm glad you said that thank you yeah so Scott how do you how do you know her uh, through the uh, Smith Fund okay Coming back and forth <laughs> making sure that he got his money <laughs> there you go yeah she's good that way I could tell. I oh yeah, I mean she's she's definitely like the power behind, <laughs> but it's just like every 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 like you know, every back and forth was just I felt like you know you're you're dealing with something very special, and then and then you know you see him now. I mean it's uh, you know I I knew the work, but I've never heard him you know speak, and I think it's also so speaks to in a lot of ways to uh, the power of somebody who lives there and somebody who's living through it. Um, you know, not to take away from you know all the you know the photographers who've gone in and so on and so forth. You know, they they also bring something special, and but there is a a deeper understanding and a deeper. Um, I think you know when when it when it it all comes from someplace inside you that you know that you know the idea that you're living there, and you know I think that. The whole when he's talking about, you know, being in the building, you hear a door close, you hear something like, you know, anything, you know, that is that is that you know that 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 takes it to a whole other level, both emotionally, spiritually, and visually. Yeah. That I think what and what's amazing to me is how he taps into that, yeah. and how he lives that, you know, every day. It's just incredible. Yeah, and, and it's it to your point. It's that subtle understanding of where he's coming from. That brings it to another level. Like yeah. that's, that's really dead on right. He, he, yeah, there's something that, like the dirt is under his nails, as we would say, right? I mean, it's, uh, 
it's yeah yeah um, I, I was i was thrilled that 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 he, that he would do it um yeah if anyone else has any other comments um uh like i said you know tomorrow we have uh laurel Traw and ira looper on friday so um you know if, if you're available and uh i know it's, it's it's a little heavy thing during the holiday season but life is life and you know this this is what's going on in the other in the other parts of the world so um i thank all of you for uh for coming in and um you know we look forward to seeing everyone tomorrow who can make it and tell a friend and on and on and on so uh, again thanks and thanks for thanks for uh reaching out there scott and, and giving us a little bit more ins insights so that, that's terrific so i thank you i'm so glad to be here thank you thanks for doing this it's incredible yeah yeah this this will get us by the end of the week this will get us to 30 presentations wow so, yeah on our on our youtube i mean and, and i have to tell you there's a number of people like jay like scott like um like sandy um and a number of other people who've really been here for almost all of them, and Robert and Stefan, I mean, it is this, these presentations, each one is riveting in its own way. So it, it's really been um, an incredible journey, I have to say. Um, so yeah, we're, um, yeah, we're, we're thrilled about it and, and we'll, we'll continue. Unfortunately, we will continue. And then there's, you know, there's, you know, watching this country build itself back up is going to be a miracle, you know, day in and day out, because they will, they just will. If we got nothing else from all these presentations about the people, there is no stopping these folks. No, they're, they're incredible. I mean, just, uh, they are they are the heroes of the day for sure. So, with that, I tell everyone good night, um, and we will see you tomorrow. tomorrow. Good night.